Hi, folks. Pastor Mike Spalding here with my good friend and big brother. I'm Pastor Casper, and we're here together to encourage you to keep listening to Deception Detection Radio, because we're both on this network with our individual shows. Yes, and yes. we're going to be doing some things together as well, and I'll just say no more. Hey, folks, tune in Deception Detection Radio, some of the best programming in Christian talk, news, encouragement, and Bible studies. God bless you. God bless. I'm Kate Carswell, and I would like to welcome you to Soul Preppers, a Deception Detection Radio Network production. Soul Preppers is a broadcast meant to edify you, feed you, and give you fellowship in the name of the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. No sugar-coated gospel or only talking about what many churches only want you to hear. Soul Preppers covers it all. New Christian or seasoned Christian, There's something here for you. Now let's get to this week's episode. Recently, I was blessed with the opportunity to interview David Hevener. David is an actor, producer, screenwriter, singer, and most importantly, a devoted Christian. We invite you to join us as we fellowship. Welcome, David. This is your first time with me on Soul Preppers. You've been on Deception Detection Radio with me before, and... It was absolutely spirit-filled, and I think tonight will be the same. I feel that way, and just thank you so much for coming Mm -hmm. on with me. Well, Kay, thank you. It's so wonderful to be here with you, and, you know, the reason it's spirit-filled is when when two people come together in truth and in spirit, uh, such as yourself, and if I may be so... uh, so bold to say myself, only I say that humbly, I'll deserve it, but... But uh, Jesus said, I will send you a comforter, you know, where two or more are gathered in, in his name, there I will be. And it can't be anything else but spirit filled. It has to be the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So uh, thank you for having me on. Um, you do a, a, an amazing work for the Lord. Thank you for that. And thank you for uh, Soul Preppers. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great platform. So thank you. Well, thank you. I give all the glory to God. He just... Um has blessed me so much through my entire life and uh, with the ministry. And you said that you would like to go ahead and say the opening prayer, so I'm going to hand it over to you, David. Okay, Kay, thank you. And, you know, um, for you guys and girls out there, as we pray, God's laid on my heart right now that, and it's okay to close your eyes. I'm not telling you not to. And and you can actually, I mean, if you, if you, if God, if the Holy Spirit's leading you to get on your knees, uh, if you're with someone that you love, uh, even someone you don't love, if you could hold hands and connect. But what I would like for this time to be is when we hear the word prayer is not a tradition, not a religion, but just a communication with the living God, with the Father. And, and Lord, we, um, we say hi to you. We thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending uh, your Holy Spirit here to guide us, direct us, to, to bring us into the full-fledged mind of Christ so that we can think, feel, be, and act like you. Lord, we don't deserve it. We don't understand it but we receive it. We receive it. We believe it. Lord, I believe there's people out there listening tonight that it's appointed. It's an appointed time for them 
that you have something to say to them that's very, very, very important, that they're struggling with something. It could be indecision, could be financially, emotional, relationship. There could be people out there, Lord, that are that 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 are having demonic that has demonic influence, and that's going to be broken tonight, Lord. I I, I say that boldly through the power of the Holy Spirit, but I say it humbly, understanding that I am your child, and I bow to you. We come together as one, as your son, before he went to the cross, he spoke to you and said, Lord, I pray, Father, that they can be as one as you and I are one, and tonight we are one, and we thank you for that, as you reveal more about yourself in this conversation between Kay and I, on soul preppers in jesus name amen in jesus holy name amen that was beautiful david thank you praise god we are going into well we have been for a while um into the holiday season and there's a lot going on right now and this seems to be a time where people that are involved in the satanic community um, they step up a bit, and I'm, I'm not going to forget, we're going to talk about uh, The Last Evangelist, too, um, mm. before we go tonight, but they're stepping up, and different things are happening. It seems like God is really making his presence known. Um, I was telling you that they have uh, just built, or they're building the third temple in Jerusalem, right now as we speak and the question that i have for you the first one do you think that people do things on purpose to irritate and possibly try to force god's hand for jesus second return Uh, the the question is do i think they purposely do that so that so that Jesus will return sooner. Yes, like they they believe that they have the power to just aggravate him and think, you know what, I'm done with them. I'm just going to go ahead and send my son back. I'm done messing <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that that's a loaded question, and I got five answers for it. First of all, there ain't nobody anywhere on this planet that's going to cause Jesus to come back one iota, one second earlier than than what the Father has planned for him to come back. That's Amen. number one. Uh, number two is when I hear Christians and I do it, and they're doing it more now than ever. Uh, I, had, I heard a big preacher, a well-known preacher, on a, uh, on a big Christian broadcast just about floored me. I uh, was walking through the store, and he was up on one of those big screens, and he said, uh, quote, uh, paraphrase, quote, um, you know, I don't need to prep. I don't need to do anything because I'm going to be taken up. You see, God's people were not born to be persecuted. God's people is going to be, t- and I had to stop, and what? I had to listen, and I'm going, well, yeah, yeah, this is the, well, listen, okay, this is part Matthew 24, Jesus spoke about this, and and I feel like Matthew 24 might be a pivotal point for us tonight, but uh, he talked about this. Um, He's saying, basically, many will come in my name, saying I'm Christ, and deceive many. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean someone's going to come and say, you know, I'm Jesus, I look like Jesus, but what they do is they take his word and twist it. They become a Christ-like figure. And so, that's the other, that's answer number two. Okay, so first of all, answer number one is is no one can do anything to cause Jesus to come back any earlier or change anything. Number two is there's Christians sitting out there thinking that they're just going to be zoomed up and they don't need to do anything. Okay, uh, that right there is very, because we are, Jesus specifically addressed that many times mm-hmm. to his disciples as in Matthew 24 they were trying to get him to answer these questions and he and he would not answer them the way they wanted to number three um, I question when you say people are doing this I question if they're really Christians okay uh, now there's a difference between being deceived as a Christian 
in being a deceiving Christian, or I can't even say deceiving Christian, but you're 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 a pretending Christian who's who's de- who's intentionally deceiving. So that would be the third part of this: is I believe there's uh, de- demonic forces out there that are intentionally creating this and uh, causing people to be in this quote end time frame of mind of hey you know what it's the end time i don't need to do much i'm it's going to be over anyway i'm going to okay that that right there is just like being on the titanic and uh you know it's slowly sinking and you're just saying you know what um i'm not going to help the women and children off the boat we're all just going to sink anyway it'll be over soon you know we're all going to go to heaven no God's saying, get that lifeboat, get the, get the life jacket on those kids, get those women and children off that boat. You have no idea what I have in store for the future. So anyway, that, did I answer your question or did I just get, get off on a rant? No, you did. You answered it. And, and you kind of brought a different aspect to it than what I'd had in my mind where you said that you really don't believe that it's Christians that are um trying to push god's buttons and my thought has always been that it is people from the satanic from the devil's side that are the ones that are trying to push the buttons because in their mind when we go to armageddon their side's going to win we know the end of the bible you know we know we've got god is god well. Right, right. Well, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're saying that um, that the satanic, the demonic world is pushing God's buttons to try to get them to come back. See, I, I, it, I find it hard to, to believe. See, demons don't want to have anything to do with God. They're not going to communicate with But what they do is they deceive others. They mm-hmm. They cause deception. And so... You know, all they need to do is just let time go by so that people can stay lukewarm or can believe that all they need to do is just with their suitcases packed, they're ready to go up to heaven. That's what the devil wants people to believe. And that's how I think the demonic world is casting these these spells and these uh, hexes and these rituals and the demonic influence upon uh, some of them aren't Christians, but most of these people that say they're Christians, I don't believe they're really Christians. I think they're they're either from the covens that have mixed in with the church, Christianity, or they're uh, they're de- deceived and unsaved. Um, so I know I'm being a little all over the place, but but my point is I'm I'm believing that that the demonic world. Uh, has po- is has power over the flesh, but mm-hmm. for them to try to influence God, I'm believe according to what I read in Scripture that the devils didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. They didn't like it when Jesus obviously he cast them out. So I'm believing that these demonic forces are influencing the flesh, the people. That makes sense. And when people going back with that too. The people that aren't Christians, even though they believe in their own mind that they are, they're the ones, instead of loving and following the God of the Bible, they follow the God that they have created in their own minds. Amen. That's right. Well, again, Matthew 24. Um, uh, It's um, many false prophets. uh, And... uh, it talks about it talks about the people will be given over to their own yes. uh, their own lust their own you know uh and basically their own insanity and um so that what you you keep going back to matthew 24 it's it's amazing uh, how this the whole thing it just weaves through all the way from the temple uh to uh the the disciples questioning jesus when are you going to come when will these things mm-hmm. be what's going to happen and uh um it's not so, for you to know yet you know that's what he said and it's still true today it, it, exactly exactly um you know they asked jesus in matthew 24 um they said um 
uh, it said, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See ye not these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. As he stood there upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came and said to him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name. Okay, now what happens here, if you read it all the way through, we won't read it right now, is Jesus gave a whole list of things that would happen. Okay, now I'm believing these guys did not want to hear this whole grocery list. I'm believing they wanted to, like, have a date, you know, like, would, is it like a year, uh, a couple weeks? Uh, can you, uh, and so <laughs> Jesus wove in all of these things that were going to happen before the coming of the Son of Man. And so the point is this, the point is that we as this generation, our microwave generation, we want to pop it in the microwave. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I eat popcorn. And <laughs> even on the even on the microwave, there's a button that says popcorn uh, because a lot of us are too lazy to actually put it on number three or four. We have to hit popcorn and it pops the popcorn. And then, you know, we come back and open it up and eat it. We're a microwave generation. And... Uh, this is not, Jesus coming back is not a microwave. of This doesn't get popped in, turn on three minutes, and out comes Jesus. This is a very, very detailed, Jesus listed very specific things going to happen. And what this means is that we as Christians must do several things. Number one is we must pray, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Number two, we must read the scripture and see how the Holy Spirit reveals this information to us. And for those of you guys that are listening, it's Matthew 24. Read the whole Matthew 24. Do not read it until you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a new revelation. Because if you read it trying to figure things out, you'll just end up like a professor at some college trying to teach theory. And you, you, you'll have no idea what's going on. But I promise you, the Holy Spirit, if you go to the Holy Spirit and ask him to guide you, he'll they'll it will re reveal to you. So the answer is, there is no easy answer and no quick answer that people have to pray about it, read scripture, and just trust that, that you know, God, Jesus is coming back exactly when the Father said he was. Amen. And I think a lot of it, too, with people um, in the generation that just think they don't have to do anything that, that God will pick you up, I... I'm sorry, but I have to blame a lot of that on the church building because people go in, they're given, they're, it's a cherry picking process in the churches and people, we're guilty of that in everyday life too, but you can't do that with the Bible. And when you go into church, it's not all about a feel-good message you have got to get in and get to the heart of it and understand exactly what God was saying and not hear just the good things that when you walk out you just feel so happy and you're supposed to be thinking and praying on what you hear and the people that are teaching you when they go before God if they've left things out that you needed for your salvation they're going to have to answer for that oh amen amen well as you were speaking uh the scripture came to man mine Matthew 24 and it says uh, verse 21 actually let's go back to uh uh verse yeah let's go back to verse uh 20, but pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Mm. Now, now, when someone gets in the pulpit and starts reading this to most congregations, believe me, this is not a feel-good message. Okay? No. 
If you're not saved, it's a message of damnation. If you are saved, it's a message of tribulation. But no matter what, you got a lot of shun at the end of, of the word. Okay, either damn or it's going to be tribulation, damnation or tribulation. But there ain't no feel good in this. And so um, we talked about this uh, on the show last night. Um, it, I don't know if you mind me saying, but I have, uh, Kay, I have a, a live show I'm doing on uh, uh, YouTube every yes. Monday night uh, from 8, uh, 8 uh, p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm also on Roku, Amazon, and Facebook every Monday night, David Hebner Live. But we talked about this last night. We talked about people coming up and prophesying over people and saying, listen, I only give encouraging prophecy. I only give encouraging messages. Well, excuse me. That means you filter out what the Holy Spirit has to say. Yes, that's so right? true. I mean, come on, read the prophets. Read Jeremiah. Read Most of the Old Testament is the prophets uh, uh, pleading with the people to stop. Uh, condemning the people for what they're doing. I mean, to the point where the people wanted to kill them, right? right. Uh, so, so this is this is ridiculous, and and it's it's rampant. It's a cancer in the um, in the body of Christ, in the buildings, in the tradition, in the religion. Uh, unfortunately, Kay, it's going to do nothing to get worse. But but my job and your job is is that to bring the truth to God's elect, to God's true believers. To give them encouragement uh, and to give to to wake up those that are his uh, elect that are asleep. And yes, yeah. And when I say encouragement, I don't mean to say oh everything's okay. I'm saying encouragement that hey, what Jesus said in Matthew 24 is exactly what's happening today. That's your encouragement. Your encouragement. You need to know that what Jesus said is really happening, not what some pastor with a 40,000 member congregation has a holding up his latest book saying, you know, you got your best life right now. Forget that. You got to listen to what Jesus was talking about. Matthew 24. Yes. And as far as the prophets go, you know, in the Bible, it states if someone gives just one inaccurate prophecy, you know, they were supposed to be stoned back in the day. But you've got people now that still follow people that consider themselves prophets and get so much wrong. And yeah. it's it's ridiculous because, you know, God gave us every single thing in the Bible that we need to know. And he told us that as we become closer to him and, and stronger in him, and he will take those... Um, scales from our eyes so that we see and understand exactly what he was saying and understanding it and we don't have to rely on the human body to do that because God has already done it for us and we just have to draw closer to him and be receptive of him and trust him above all else and you don't have to have a prophet on the earth to do that amen amen well said Kay. god bless you thank sure. you um this is really emotionally charged right now because i mean i've got tears in my eyes this is just so close to me as as far as the way that I see how things are going in the world and that people are just tossing God aside mm -hmm. and doing what they want to do. You know, the road is narrow to God and wide is the path of destruction. That's right. That's right. You see, we have to understand as we enter these last days... And I, I guess it's because we're, we're human, obviously, um, that we always want, you know, when you watch a movie, there's usually always a happy ending most of the time. You know, you, you want a resolution that 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 kind of uh, the kind of uh, is synergistic synergy to your soul. Um, we don't like walking out of the movie where things aren't resolved, where things didn't turn out really good. And it's it's our human nature to just want things to be okay, okay? 
but it's not that way. It's, it is not that way. Unfortunately, this thing ends very ugly, okay, for more people than not. There's going to be more people going to hell than there are people going to heaven. That's right. I didn't, I didn't say it. The Bible says it. Now, yes. if we believe in Scripture, that's what... Now, do we sit around and think about it and go, boy, no, no, we don't need to do that. But why in the world would we think that this thing is going to be okay, that there, there's not going to be tribulation, that there's not going to be uh, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines and... Pe- no, all this is going to happen. And whether we're here... Uh, or, I mean, we pray that we're taken up. We pray that, right? But we can't sit here with our suitcases packed and go, okay, God, I'm, I'm ready for the bus to come, you know. Uh, that That's just not going to happen. I mean, that's just not the way uh, that the Father operates. And you can see this in Matthew 24. That's true. We just, we do, we have to be ready and prepared. And that's the thing about soul preppers. Um, you know, the virgins have to have that oil in their lamp, and that's what we need. We, Yes, it's nice to have extra food and extra water, but we also know that God is going to, he's going to be there for us. If he takes us to it, he's going to take us through it. We just have to be there and stay close to him and have that trust. Amen. Amen. So well said. Now, we're going through a time, too, um, that we're seeing an uptick on things happening in the world. I believe we're in the birth pains uh, going into tribulation. I think it's still a little early to say that we're right in the middle of it because I think things are going to get much worse. Yes, they're bad now, but they're going to get much worse. In the last week, there's been an increase. There's been earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, tornadoes, and now they've got that huge snowstorm down in North Carolina. When is the last time North Carolina got hit with one to two feet of snow on the top of the Smokies? Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I just thought of that. You're right. I saw it on the news last night, but it didn't really hit me. Yeah, and again, um, the, these, um, uh, the, the earthquakes, um, the uh, the Jesus talked about nation rising against nation. He talked talks about all this is there. Uh-huh. It's all there, Kay. Right there, Matthew twenty four. Uh, that's my that's my scripture. That's my whole Bible verse. I I go by with last evangelist. When I read this, this is last evangelist. I love it. And, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I knew God was going to lead tonight. I had absolutely no doubt in that, and He is. <laughs> um, <laughs> But right now, too, in Chicago, they have put up a satanic display in Chicago. Well, no, I'm sorry, in Springfield. And it's really close to the nativity scene and the menorah. And it shows an arm that's encircled by a serpent. And the serpent is winding up the hand, holding an apple. And below it is the inscription, Knowledge is the Greatest Gift. And this was erected by a satanic group. And they feel that the serpent is the hero from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the the forbidden fruit. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, if you if you look at if if you back up and look at civilization from a distance, uh, and I don't want to say from God's point of view because who 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 am I to say that? Even though He has given us the mind of Christ, so maybe we can say that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you back up and look, it's not really about statues and about the. And what you're saying is is very real and it's very true, and I'm not trying to discredit that because it, it is important. But what I'm trying to say is, don't you agree that this comes from a godless 
society. In, in other words, in order for a demon to operate, he needs to have an empty vessel to operate in. Okay? If a demon comes to a house and finds the Holy Spirit, he's going to run like heck. Yes. But if he comes and finds an empty vessel, a God-less deity, God -le there is no God, oh, he's going to have a heyday. And he's going to call all of his buddies and say, let's have a big party. Okay? And so what's happened is the devil has found a godless society, and they've moved in all their family friends, and, and they've, you know, multiplied, and this is what you have. And there's, now, can it be rectified? Well, it can be, but the church needs to step up to the plate and stop handing out tracts and start casting out demons. Amen. Okay? Because it is up to Jesus. Jesus said, I'm giving you the authority. You know, God has get the father's given to me. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you authority to do all these amazing things, including casting out demons, performing miracles. Blah, 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 and we don't do any of it. You know, the church, the ch when I say we, the church buildings, the establishment, they just want to kind of, you know, brush it under the rug. But when you are a child of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have that power, that authority to cast these demons out. And uh, so that's why when we encounter these things, okay, that we have the power to come against these things. If, and, and we do it for God because we love the Lord, but we do it for our brothers and our sisters because... Amen. That's that's you know that's what we do. It's where's the groups that uh, come out and rebuke what they're doing. Um, the way I see it is the adults. They're so um, what do you want to call it? brainwashed right now with a lot of things. But the ones that have the kids and they drive bodies displays, and the people that say that they're Christian instead of getting out there and doing something about it and telling their children, look, this is what's going on here, but this is what God tells us. Mm -hmm. And That's right. it gets into the kids' minds. And I don't think people a lot of times stop to think about that, that we have to guard our children. We're supposed to bring our children up in the ways of God so that when they're grown, that they will always return to that. And right. it's it's just ridiculous because you know that they have got this right in a place where so many people are driving by every single day. And it's going to get into their spirit. But That's then, right. then we run into another problem, though, David. The Constitution. The freedom of religion. We have the right to observe our Christian faith but now I'm not saying we should change anything but this is something that is, has been on my mind for a while um, but when there is a, a, a guarding of religious freedom that doesn't mean it's just for Christians you are opening up that door to allow anyone that has because Satanists will say they have a religion and it is Satanism you have oh, yeah. to open up that door for them you've got to open it up for islam buddhism mm -hmm. every single faith so we kind of opened up a can of worms clear back when the constitution was written but now we're getting uh elbowed out to make room for these other religions and i don't think that christianity is religion i call it a faith because it's mm -hmm. a way of life and doesn't lean on doing things to get our, us into God, into mm. heaven. That's right. That's right. It's it's a relationship, not a religion. Um, That's right. But, yeah, I mean, look, um, freedom of religion is true. They, they want that because they want Islam. They want, um, uh, they want all, all of the, uh, uh, the false religions involved the only thing that there is no freedom of is there's no freedom of the real god and there is no freedom to tell the truth 
Okay, they they outlaw God, the real God, but they but they tell you there's a freedom of religion. So you you're absolutely right. But Christians, the real Christians, need to understand this: that when they hear "I have a freedom of religion," if you're listen to me, if you're a real Christian, if you are a real truth seeker in a in a in the elect, you have no freedom. That's right. You have no rights. You have no freedom upon this planet, upon this earth, in this world, in this system, because they hate you. Why do they hate you? Why do they hate me? Why do they hate Kay? Because Jesus said it. He said, if you follow me and you do what I do, they're going to hate you. They hated me. And that's what, it, that's what, what, I'm not making this up. This is what Jesus says in scripture. Okay. So we must understand that we are a hated people. Now, now people won't come up to you and tell you, but if they don't come up to you and tell you, there's either two things going on. They're either hiding it from you, or you're not performing as a real Christian. You're, 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 um, you're fluffing it, okay? But when you stand for God, you're going to stand counterculture, and that culture is not going to like the fact that you're and they're going to come down on you. I say that not because you've been beaten, because you're you're not. You have the power of the living God in you. You can uh, you can uh, abstain. You can uh, withstand any anything, uh, any turmoil, any darkness. But we have to understand the truth, and we have to start speaking the truth. Okay, we can't keep doing these cynical uh, sermons. They're they're driving people into the pits. It is, and I am, to be honest with you, David, I am so sick of everything having to be PC, um, politically correct, because you have to walk on too many eggshells, and the truth isn't being told. That's right, that's right. You see, we have to be spiritually correct, not politically correct. Exactly. We're children of God. We are spirit. We, we, our first allegiance is to our Father, who is a spirit, and so are we. So the spirit rides everything. The problem is most Christians are thinking in the, in the natural realm, not the supernatural realm. So they look at the consequences of the natural Unfortunately, if we keep doing that, we're going to miss the consequences we're going to face in the spiritual, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is, uh, you know, this is not something a lot of people want to hear. But, you know, I'm believing out there, Kay, that there is someone that's listening to us going, you know what? I, I'm, I needed to, I, it's not that I want to hear it, but I needed to hear this. I, I'm ready to stand up and start taking the hits by telling the truth, no matter what happens. Um, mm, praise God. God laid on, God laid on my heart. Said, you know, you haven't ever started living, David, until you found something worth dying for, and that's the truth. Yes. And and he's right. He's right. You know, that's why so many Muslims, I'm talking extremists, are willing to go blow themselves up and die for a useless cause. But you know what? Something, Kay, they have something most a lot of Christians don't have. Do you know what they have? Faith. <laughs> they have faith in the wrong thing. That's right. But, but but they have the faith, and they found something that they're willing to die for. And when someone's willing to die for something, they are very dangerous to the opposition. Okay? Very dangerous. So when a Christian has found something they're willing to die for, Satan gets very nervous, very nervous. And and I don't necessarily mean die in the flesh, but, you know, when you do something for God, you're dying to the world and you're living for God, you see. And this is what's important for people to understand. We need to living for the world and we need to dying for Christ. Oh, so well said, David. Exactly. Wow. You know what? I think that that's a good place for us to 
kind of close off the interview for tonight. I want to have you back again because uh, you're you are so much like my friend um, BDK from Omega Frequency. We get together, and the Holy Spirit is just—he's right here. And um, wow. mm-hmm. the truth really starts flowing, and I praise God and thank Him so much for that. I would love well, for you to tell everyone you've got such an exciting project going on right now for God, the last evangelist. Mm. Can you mm. please tell now I'm going to tell everyone you can catch David's other interview with me, but it's on deception detection radio and it's all about the last evangelist, but I want him to tell you about it right here on soul preppers. Well, thank you, Kay. Yeah. The last evangelist is, is a TV series, a six part TV series. Uh, each episode is about a half hour long. Um, it's I call it CSI meets the Book of Revelation. Um, it's live action. I play a character named John Rhodes, and uh, it's today, unfortunately. But you have the modern church, which is now married to the government, to the political system. And then you have the underground church, which is basically illegal. And so my job is to bust underground churches and um, and to arrest them and have them persecuted. Um haven't pro- pro- uh, prosecuted um, until one night in my apartment, God finds me or I find God and um, kind of like, you know, the, the road to Damascus, right? I have my road to Damascus and God reveals himself to me and says, why are you doing this to my people? And so with a Bible in one hand, a gun in the other, uh, I take off to find the Antichrist. Uh, I encounter cashless society, Mark of the Beast, the things that K that are in society today and the things that we're going to encounter even as, as soon as tomorrow, possibly. So it's, you know, it, it's a series that I'm not going to say it's entertaining. That's the wrong word. I'm not making it for that. I pray that it's truth telling. I pray that people will look at it and go, oh, my goodness, can, is this really, you know, happening and not look at it as entertainment. I, will, I want it to, to be, um, uh, you know, edutainment. I want it to be. Uh, something that they can watch and then go to God and go to Scripture. Um, So that's what it's really all about. And um, I thank you for, you know, really asking me about that. And if people want to know uh, more about it, they can go to lastevangelist.com. You can sign the newsletter, and I'll uh, send you out uh, weekly dates on what's going on. If you want to uh, donate, I'm not going to investors. God said, go to my people. They'll hear my voice. They will donate and we've had people step up to the plate you can buy a t-shirt you can buy a hat hey you can even buy a walk on roll or you can buy a a part in the movie or even a production credit um it's kind of like crowdfunding but this is what we're doing and this is the whole ministry okay this is all all the money goes toward last evangelist goes toward me doing all these interviews uh you know i have that youtube channel um Mm -hmm. and and also goes to david heavener Dot TV, the Roku channel, which is where Last Evangelist will air. You can go there too and sign up and watch a, a lot of programming. And also, I absolutely love David Heavener live on Monday nights. David has some fantastic guests on. It's so engaging. Um, it just keeps your mind working. And even when David's on by himself, you can tell that God is there with him, and it's just an amazing broadcast. So I encourage you all to tune into that. It's live every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and mm. you're not going to be disappointed. Mm. Thank you, Kay. God bless you, and I praise God. God bless Thank you. Me. Well, I'm mm. going to do the closing prayer. Is there a way, though, is the way for everybody to get in touch with you? through the davidheavener.com yeah you can or last evangelist.com sorry it, yeah last evangelist.com you can also reach me at david at davidheavener.com you can email me uh i'll get the email uh, sometimes my staff gets it uh but but it always ends up in front of me no matter who it is i try to uh read each email pray over each email and uh so yeah that's the way to get in touch with me wonderful well, thank you so much for coming on with me, David. I'm looking forward to the next time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say tonight's closing prayer then. Amen. All right. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, 
I, I just can't thank you enough for bringing David on with me again and allowing us to fellowship on Soul Preppers, to talk about the things that are coming, Father, that you have told us about in your holy word. And there are so many people that need to hear your word. And I'm praying, Father, that ears were open and that the hearts were receiving for your message please look after everyone that's listening anyone who's not here not um, saved father please let them hear your voice and come to you let every knee bow to you father please look after david and his family and their travels, wherever they're going, whatever they're doing, be with them, Father, and protect them because there's such a, an important message from you through them. And look after me too, Father. I always need uh, your protection, and I am so grateful that you're with me every day. In Jesus' holy and mighty name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Kay. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and God bless you, David. God bless everyone who's listening. I pray that um, you just have a wonderful week, and I probably will be back in about three weeks. I'm going to try to start doing an episode of Soul Preppers at least once a month. God bless you all, and that's going to do it for tonight, everyone. Good night. We'll make a- Oh, 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 oh,